back here today. Thank you. Gentleman leaving with the light gray suit. Uh, Mr. Varner, monsieur? Yes, 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 Mr. Varner. Is he staying here? He is, Mr. Bradley. Room uh, 618. It's Monsieur Secretary Horvick. Thank you. Vladimir Horvick. In person. I think you ought to grab the first plane to can and bring your filing system with you. It's impossible for me to get away right now. You'd better force yourself. Now, listen to this. Vladimir Horvick is slated for assassination. It'd be nice to keep him alive. He maintains the balance of power in his own country. His chief deputy and minister of communications is Mikolos Zentner. Apparently, there's been some sort of rift between them. Now, I'm sure he's not personally pulling the trigger. Huh? No, but he is pulling the string. He's using Varner, the international hitman, to do the work. Perhaps we should let Horvick know that Zentner intends to kill him. We couldn't prove anything. Zentner's too clever to leave loose plots lying around. I have an idea. You're going to get involved? <sighs> the way I figure it, I already am. Except you, of course. Oh, Samantha, you have a wicked mind. <laughs> Thank heavens that at least his work is. Vladimir, I want you to meet a very dear friend of mine. Oh, Gene Bradley. I've seen you many times on the screen. And I've seen you up there a few times myself. Oh, newsreel, but hardly as interesting as your films, huh? Yeah, but those speeches of yours have packed quite a while ago. <laughs> Some of them even had me ripping the chair on occasion. <laughs> oh, you, you are here for the film festival? That's right. He's hosting a television special covering the entire thing. And Gene tells me you've turned down his request for an interview. Now, Vladimir. I have? I was not aware of that. Well, I, I went through normal channels. Your, uh, your minister of communication is not too happy about communicating. Zetna is not the final word. Of course, if First Secretary Horvick has agreed. I give Mr. Bradley my word. Yes, it's getting late. I must return to my hotel. 7.30, Mr. Bradley? That'll be fine. I'll see you then. Cheer up, Mr. Zentner. Maybe the world won't be home the night we show the program. He's just arrived for you, sir, by special messenger. Thank you. If you'll excuse me. Oh, thank you. Oh, 
Josh from you, Van. I don't know how it could have leaked out, but I can read. Decoded, it says, have reason to suspect attempt on life of first secretary by unknown assailant. Take all precautions, dispatching assistance immediately. It's signed Kroll, Chief, Section G6. Uh-huh. You've got to advance your schedule. That's no problem. I hope not. I shall be with the judges at the festival. Only contact me if it's urgent. Don't worry. Oh. Uh, the, the payment. The prescribed place. The messenger. <laughs> it's excellent. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Zetner, on uh, second thought, it doesn't suit you. Varner goes to work the minute Horvick arrives at his hotel. The secretary left for the villa about exactly 12 minutes ago. All right, that means I've got four minutes. understood that my country has extended invitations to all nations interested in participating in a true search for peace. My government has proposed time and again a five-power conference. Including China to seek measures for a reduction in international tensions. I urge a favorable reflection upon the possibility of a five-power conference, provided, of course, the nations professing to want peace would actually consider it. You'd forgotten all about me. Would uh, David forget his slingshot? What is our friend Varna up to? He's got a suite directly above Horvick's, and he's been in his rooms all day. He only left about 15 minutes ago. And where is he now? 
He's at a sidewalk cafe directly opposite the hotel, and he's real cool. Uh, he should be. He must feel the chills running up and down my spine. Hmm. I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> yes, very good, very good. Very interesting. Still there. He hasn't made a move. <laughs> I'm sure when he does, it'll be a few. Secretary Horvick's key, please. Voila, monsieur. another glass of wine. Uh, I have a funny feeling it is not my life he is toasting. Well, it's clean. Almost sanitary, no bugs, no nothing. Hasn't moved. He takes a suite directly over Horvick's. Why? He's either coming in through the ceiling, through an air vent, down the wall onto the terrace. It takes a brief walk down one flight of steps into the front door. And where is he now? Sitting across the street having a glass of wine. Well, he has to make his hit before seven. You got 20 minutes. He's getting up. He's going into the cafe. He's going to the cafe. Secretary Horovic's suite. <laughs> One moment. I'll see if he's taking calls. It's Varna. Well, don't tell me he's going to talk me to death. This is Secretary Horovic speaking. Hello. I said this is Secretary Horovic. Hello? 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 I...
sounded like a bomb. Well, I don't know. I just got here. <laughs> Say, aren't you? Yeah, Jane. yeah, yeah, sometimes. Did you hear? Hello, reception. I, I heard that there was a, an explosion in your hotel on the fifth floor. I have some friends staying there. Was, uh, was anyone hurt? Oh, we don't know yet. But if anybody was in that room, dead is more likely. What is going on? Monsieur Secretary, it was your suite that... What about my suite? It isn't there anymore. You're a very lucky man, Mr. Secretary. Somebody was celebrating the 4th of July with real firecrackers. You don't even observe Independence Day. I think we should leave immediately, Mr. Secretary. No, I don't think you should. I did a picture like that once. They missed the first time, but nailed them at the airport. Believe me or not, Mr. Buddy, this is the second time today. Well, then it could be. Three strikes would put you out. This is not exactly a game, Mr. Bradley. I'm sorry, Mr. Secretary. I didn't mean it to sound that way. I don't think that we should stand around here. Look, we have an interview plan in ten minutes. I think it'd be perfectly safe that way. Then you can call the police. The police? Well, until you uh, make arrangements for your... Well, you do have your own security people, no. don't you? <laughs> well, then they'd hardly make a move while the cameras were rolling. Oh, that, that, that makes sense, yes. Should I? I gave it a lot of thought. Join you. I was expecting somebody. Perhaps it was me you were expecting. Ah. Yes. That's it. Perhaps we have something to drink to. We certainly do. Sorry to have to drink and run, but... Why the rush? We should get to know each other. You make it sound very appealing. Perhaps another time. Okay. 
Zentner, double cross. s'il vous plaît. He's in the meeting with the judges. Yes, very important. Zentner speaking. International Television Communications, Monsieur Zentner. Our deepest regrets. Regrets? No, that is impossible. I'd better get to the hotel. I doubt if there's anything you can do there now. They've removed the bodies. But uh, we do think there is a statement in order, especially since you're the next in line to the post. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, I'm just so shocked. But where do you want me to come? International Television Communications. The unit is parked over at the hotel. Mm. Monsieur Zentner left five minutes ago. We should be starting in a few minutes. The crew are out in the van checking the equipment. How long will this take? Well, that depends entirely on the secretary. We've got a pretty extensive cast we're going to be hearing from. I uh, thought this was going to be televised. Oh, uh, it will be, from inside. But we want to record a statement on audio tape while we're waiting for them to finish off the lighting. Hey, here. Sit down. Make yourself comfortable. I'll just go see how they're making out in there. Merci. Ah, Monsieur Zentner, I was told he would be here. Well, you were told right. He's just in there. Thank you. I wonder what's keeping them. I'll go and find out. What are you doing here? Yes, you are surprised. I did not miss, but as you see, you did. I'm still alive. What are you talking about? Hovik's dead? Yes. I killed him as you requested. With the bomb in his telephone. How's the reception? Coming in loud and clear. It's a pity it's not on film. Well, who likes unhappy endings? Depends on who's watching the show. 